Hello and welcome to this PowerShell.org tech session entitled Tab Completion. My name is Tim Warner. I'm a full-time author with Pluralsight and a PowerShell.org video contributor. Today we're continuing our video series covering each entry from the free ebook, The Big Book of PowerShell Gotchas from the DevOps Collective. You can see a bit.ly link down at the bottom of this slide that will take you directly to this free ebook, to which you can actually contribute if you feel inclined. In each video, we focus on just a single element from this ebook, and of course, today's entry is all about PowerShell tab completion. Let's get right into the code. Today's subject is tab completion, also called auto completion, in the PowerShell environment. This works in both the standard console host as well as the PowerShell Integrated Scripting Environment, or ISE. I'm going to run this demo using the ISE because it also gives us the benefit of what Microsoft calls IntelliSense, where we get a heck of a lot popping up on the screen as we type, besides just simple tab completion. If you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. We'll explain it as we go along. The name of today's script file is tabcompletion.ps1. At the end of this presentation, I'll give you a download Load link. I have the file on my website and also on line 9. This is a bit.ly link again that points you to the underlying gotchas ebook for this series. Now then, to set up my environment in this region here, you see that I've set my location to my D drive and let's run PS version table .ps version so you can compare your version of the PowerShell engine with mine. I'm running PowerShell v5 release to manufacturing and you'll notice that off to the side I've included a PowerShell comment. Single line comments in PowerShell, by the way, are accomplished by using the pound sign, also called the Octothorpe character, believe it or not. V3 is when the tab completion really ramped up. So as long as you're running PowerShell v3 or higher, you'll be able to follow along with me and reproduce everything I'm doing. As a general practice, you want to make sure to have an administrative PowerShell session open. You want to run update help to ensure that your local help is up to date. And line 18, temporarily, just in the scope of this ISC process, changes our script execution policy to bypass just to make sure that we're able to run all of this code with no problems. That having been said, let's get into the subject matter for today, and that is this thing called tab completion. I don't know how many times I've seen people give demos where they'll do something like this, get WMI, and as they're typing, their eyes are down on their keyboard, and they're not looking on the screen. In the ISC, you see that IntelliSense will actually drop down all of the commandlet matches that relate to what you're typing. So I just want to scream. Just type one more letter and press tab to complete that commandlet. You see what I'm saying? Tab completion is super important for you as a PowerShell scripter, and it's not for the lazy. It's for those of us who want to get it right. The tab completion does a couple things. Number one, it aids in command discovery. For instance, notice when I do get tab, the IntelliSense feature and the ISE will drop down an alphabetized list of all commandlets that are available on your computer that include that. But at the same time, you can take advantage of tab completion just by pressing tab. This is what you would do in a traditional PowerShell session as opposed to the ISE. And I'm tabbing through and PowerShell is stepping through every get command starting with A's going all the way to the Z's. And tab takes you forward and shift tab takes you backwards. So if you're tabbing along really quickly and then realize, well, I just needed storage account there, you can shift tab to get back to the command and then press space to continue on your way. I'm a big fan of making sure to explicitly define all of my parameters. PowerShell is pretty user friendly in as much as you can just supply values without specifying parameters, get child item. And you notice I'm typing get dash chi tab to complete that command. I could just do a get child item and then specify a path. Notice also that the IntelliSense feature in the ISE drops down to reveal all of the possibilities. If you're just in the console, let me actually replicate it down below. Get child item up. Looks like the ISE console is still IntelliSense enabled. Here we go. I have a standard console host right now. Let me clear the screen. 
If we do a get child item, notice that I tab complete, and then as I press tab, it assumes the current directory and goes through a list of every resource wherever my current prompt is. But like I said, I prefer to use explicit parameters, and I happen to know that the first position positional parameter for get child item is path, so that autocomplete or tab completion also affects parameters as well. And here again, you can start to press tab or shift tab to work your way back and forth through the file system. Isn't that amazing? So the long story short, I just want you to see that the tab completion functions at multiple levels. We've got the ability to do commandlet autocompletion. If, for instance, I want to run a set Azure command, we could just type set dash and then start tabbing through. That's going to take a little while. If I do set dash az tab, whoops, it looks like it's trying to complete an entire Azure commandlet. By the way, if you don't have these commandlets on your machine, don't worry about it. You have to actually have the Azure PowerShell module installed in order to have these commands available. I hope that makes sense. But set Azure v, let's say, takes us to virtual network. Or if we want a VM command, notice that now we're in the VM. So what I'm saying is, with practice, you should be able to type a little bit, tab, and if you overshoot the mark, the worst case scenario is you just use your backspace key to come back. So that's commandlet autocompletion. Now, I guess there is an assumption that you're doing touch typing, because if you're a hunt and peck typer and your eyes are glued to your keyboard, then a lot of this tab completion isn't going to make sense anyway. So let me suggest, if I may, Mavis Beacon teaches typing. I'm not kidding. I took touch typing in school. Heck, I'm old enough to where when I learned touch typing, in middle school, I used an electric typewriter, although I have experience with manual typewriters as well. But Mavis Beacon, I found, is an extremely useful tool and will help you become a good touch typer. Now, a few minutes ago, before I interrupted myself, I said that in addition to commandlet autocompletion, PowerShell v3 and up can also autocomplete parameters and values. And I was saying that just as a general best practice, instead of using positional parameters, add those parameters explicitly in your code. I do that even during demos. And I also mentioned that in addition to just the parameter autocompletion, oftentimes pressing tab after the parameter will give you autocomplete choices. Now, set locations is potentially a good one. It's going to give me directories as part of my current working directory, which on my system is the D drive. But remember that autocompletion isn't perfect. Sometimes it will guess incorrectly. And other times the PowerShell programmers or whoever authored the module that you're using may not have added auto-completion ability in their source code. Ultimately, this has to come from the source code, okay? On line 43, get sim instance. This is really cool, actually, because when you think about the SIM repository on a Windows computer, there are so many classes to choose from. So what I've done here is I've done a get sim instance, tab, CL for class name, tab complete, space, tab and look what it's doing. It's actually enumerating all of the classes. That is just insane. So if I wanted, for instance, Win32 Logical Disk, I could just do that. Win32 underscore LO tab. And within two strikes of the tab key, I'm good to go. And then I can just either make use of IntelliSense here in the ISE or tab shift tab in the console to work through my parameter values. Enumerations are sets of valid values for a parameters, valid arguments, let's say. And a good example of that would be the built-in parameter, the global parameter error action. So on line 49, we're running a get child item in the current working directory. Our filter is going to gather all PS1 files, which you probably know are PowerShell script files. And then for error action, if we want to override the default, we can just type the parameter, tab completed actually, press space, and and then tab through any of these valid options in the enumeration. This is useful to constrain the input that the PowerShell script runner is choosing. Of course, there's only these predefined error actions in the PowerShell core engine, so it makes sense that they would only be available here. If you're wondering where can you get more help 
with regard to parameter discovery and enumerations that are supported in certain parameters, you'll want to turn to the get help command. So for instance, let me clear the screen down below because this output is going to go to the screen. We can do a get help against the commandlet set execution policy, looking only at the execution policy parameter. And what this tells us, let's hit our hide script pane button for a second, is that the enumeration valid values are as follows, and it's actually included in the help. Now, don't count on that. You'll find that depending upon who wrote the commandlet, it may be wonderfully documented, partially documented, or not at all. It really depends. You may be wondering to yourself, well, how could I add autocompletion to my own code? Maybe you've gotten far enough along in your Windows PowerShell scripting that you've begun writing these reusable code blocks called functions. Well, if that's the case, I hope that you have. This example that I'm going to show you here starting on line 62, I've adapted from an example from PowerShell MVP Dr. Tobias Veltner. He's the author of the ISE Steroids ISE add-on, just a wonderful tool in itself. I'm creating a simple function here called select select PS version. And a parameter in a function is a way to modify how the function behaves. It's basically what you're passing into the function for processing. I often think of a coffee hopper or a coffee grinder. The parameter, I guess, would be your handful of coffee beans that you throw into the hopper, which is the function. And then you press the button. That's the equivalent of executing the function. And the function performs operations upon what you've passed into it. So in PowerShell functions, we can specify one or more or parameters using the param keyword with not curly braces but round parens, a little bit of inconsistency. We'll actually deal with that with another PowerShell gotchas video later. But I want you to see here that when you define a parameter, you can just let PowerShell determine the data type and define the variable with a dollar sign. Or you can be more specific and actually specify an attribute here or a data type. The validate set attribute allows you to create an array of valid values for the parameter. So as you see here, I'm going to have this function presumably select a particular PowerShell engine version. So I have two, three, four, and five as valid values. And then the results are going to be you selected ver. I guess I would need to wrap this in a right output if I actually want to do it right. But after the function definition, we have a select version call. In fact, let me do this again. Let me load the function into my run space just by selecting those lines. And then down below, let me get rid of this line and show it to you live. When you have a function loaded in your PowerShell memory, your run space, you can then take advantage of tab completion on it, you see? So now we have select PS version and any help that you've defined. I haven't defined any help, so PowerShell just does the best job it can, as you saw there in that example, of what's expected parameter-wise. But we know that tab completion allows us to get the ver parameter, and then check this out. There's our enumeration where we can choose two, three, four, or five. And in the ISC, we can actually use the arrow keys, up arrow and down arrow, and then tab to make a selection. Isn't that great? I want to finish up by showing you two community modules that extend upon PowerShell's native tab expansion. You might know the name Jason Shirk. He's a member of the PowerShell team, a very valuable member, and he has a GitHub project here called Tab Expansion Plus Plus that's intended to improve tab expansion and IntelliSense. Read the README file, it's nicely documented, and so on. The other resource is my friend Trevor Sullivan's Azure Ext module up at the PowerShell gallery. Now, of course, there's more projects than just Jason's and Trevor's, but these are two good examples of how you can extend PowerShell's built-in tab expansion. What Trevor's module does, in part, is include a lot of enumerations to make it easier to use PowerShell with Azure. For instance, if you're deploying an Azure virtual machine, sometimes it can be a pain to find out the instance size that PowerShell expects. Trevor's actually built those enumerations so that you can use tab expansion to make it more convenient to do that work. Thank you very much for watching this presentation. To download the PowerShell script that I used today, you can navigate to my website at timwarnertech.com forward slash pshosts.zip. You can check out all of our videos, this series and all the others, at youtube.com forward slash PowerShell org. The community site is at powershell.org. If you have any questions or comments for me specifically, feel free to send me mail at timothy-warner at pluralsite.com. Alternatively, you can find me at LinkedIn and my Twitter handle is Tech Trainer Tim. Take good care and happy power shelling.